Today we're joined by Dr. Pierre Paolo Pandolfi. He is the George C. Reisman Professor of Medicine at Harvard Medical School, at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. He is the Director of Research, Director of the Cancer Genetics Program, and Chief of the Division of Genetics in the Department of Medicine. Dr. Pandolfi is the recipient of the 2011 Pez Kohler Foundation AACR International Award for Cancer Research. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Congratulations on this award. Would Thank you, you. Would you begin by telling us what it, what it means to you? It's a, a very important award which has been given, I guess, in part to a very important story that uh, I have been, uh, you know, uh, happy and, and lucky and, in a sense, proud of, of participating and contributing a story of a leukemia which, simply put, was a killer 20 years ago and by now is considered eradicated and cured. So I'm extremely proud on behalf of my team, on behalf of the APL community, and uh, this is a further stimulus to keep doing that. I mean, uh, I am genuinely interested in curing cancer. You know, I'm fascinated by research, but uh, my ultimate goal is to defeat the beast, as I say, and this will be another good reason to do so, another motivation, another stimulus to do so. Your research shed light on the molecular mechanisms and genetic underlying the pathogenesis of leukemias, lymphomas, and solid tumors, and in modeling these cancers in mice. What were some of the challenges that you faced in accomplishing this? I would say that uh, the challenges were many, but uh, I was lucky to really live through a revolution which is still ongoing. You know, what uh, I've seen developing in front of my eyes in the last 20 years since uh, we could start playing with genes, genes that underline the genetics of cancer, the ability to model uh, these genetic defects in the mouse uh, and to study the mechanism uh, was really a fantastic ride. So I would say that we had a number of hurdles, but uh, we experienced an acceleration which is unprecedented, which we enjoyed uh, intellectually, and which I am convinced will have a tremendous impact on, uh, on how we treat cancer and how we eradicate the disease. Uh, the m major hurdle was to convince ourselves that we could recreate the same cancer with the same features clinically and molecularly in a little organism such as the experimental mouse. And many people still don't believe, actually when we started we didn't know if it is, w would have been possible. Uh, but to give you an example, now we can recreate leukemias, lung cancer, breast cancer, prostate cancer in a mouse with the features which are so faithful that uh, many pathologists would not be able to tell apart the human from the mouse cancer. And now, by now, we know through this effort uh, that uh, we can use these little uh, mice, uh, this little model of cancer to test drugs. And we also know that they predict the way by which these drugs would work. And so we have decided to scale this up. At our cancer center, we have uh, launched a new platform whereby we test each and every drug in patients along with the mouse models, and we integrate the data set. So we compare how the human patient does, how the mouse does, what are the genetic determinants which dictate the response or the resistance. And we really believe, and APL, the acute promalocytic leukemia story was an example, that this will uh, tremendously impact and accelerate the testing of new drugs. And I would like to stress for the patients, uh, but also for my colleagues that uh, uh, the opportunity here is that we are uh, testing and we have the ability to test a, a number of drugs. This was not the case 10 years ago. We are really in a position and the obligation is to find a way to test them rapidly. We don't want to take another 20 years to understand which is the best uh, inhibitor of protein X or which is the best combination. So the goal, paradoxically, is not to find necessarily new drugs, but to test them and to see which one works the best, which is completely different from 10 years ago when the goal was to have new molecules. So it, the, the field has changed, and uh, I think that this acceleration will really benefit uh, uh, in the long term or in the short term this battle that we want to win. You've identified and functionally characterized several major novel proto-oncogenes and tumor suppressors. What are you working on now? So now uh, we are still working on that because the cancer genome is still giving us uh, a wealth of information. But uh, the thing that excites me the most is a, a next level of complexity which can be very useful also and informative in treatment and classification of cancer. Uh, I'm sure you know that uh, uh, our genome 
is transcribed to make proteins, but is also uh, transcribed into transcripts that don't make protein. And for many, many years, I would say, uh, in, in cancer, I would say, mm, we have never paid attention to this huge genomic dimension simply because we couldn't functionalize it. We wouldn't be able to say what this transcript that don't make for proteins uh, do. And yet we knew that these transcripts were deregulated in cancer, were overexpressed or deleted. And by now we have a, a sense of how they can uh, function, what they do, and we have a new way by which we can predict their functions. And so all of a sudden this space, which is huge, to give a sense, only 2% of our genome, of our DNA, makes for protein, but 50% of our genome is transcribed. So we were ignoring 48% of our genome, which we are now in a position to functionalize. And this dimension will be very important to understand cancer, disease at large, perhaps how we think, how we function, how our brain functions, all these functions which are extremely complex and which we couldn't attribute simply to the coding genome because the coding genome is very similar in human as well as in single cell organisms that don't think or don't exert this complex function. So I, I am extremely excited by this new dimension which will give us much more work to do in the future but gives us a further opportunity to refine our knowledge on cancer and how it works. Dr. Pandolfi, thank you so much and congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you for having me.